When you think of camouflage, you don't really envision putting a spotlight on yourself. That's about the equivalent of lighting a cigarette when you're under thermal vision. Which doesn't make sense. So why did ships turn on their lights in the middle of the night to hide themselves from other enemy ships? Were they sabotaging their own ships? Were they perhaps mentally deranged? Were they Neanderthals? No, they were actually really, really smart people who were making something way ahead of their time. Hi, my name is Simon, and if you're unaware of Swiss Link, we actually sell a ton of military surplus. We do classic wool blankets, we do storm tech, we also do waving jerry cans. We got a lot of stuff. So if you want to check out any of those things, feel free to at SwissLink.com, and we'll get right back into the video. All right, so over the decades, a ton of battleships have been experimenting with a ton of different camos, trying to basically get that concept of blending into blue water with a blue sky. I'm not a rocket scientist, but wouldn't it just make so much more sense to just paint the whole thing blue? You know, just like blue on the, dark blue on like the bottom half, light blue on the top. I don't know, I might just be dumb. But some countries like US and Britain have experimented with something called dazzle camo. When I first looked at this, it looks like exactly what you don't want to uh, blend into water. Um, but after looking at it for a little bit longer, you can actually see the true intention behind this painting pattern. So at first I made the mistake of thinking that it was somehow supposed to blend into the water, but I was sorely mistaken. It's actually meant to confuse other enemy ships, and uh, it's definitely really confusing if you look at the photos. So the pattern basically consists of these huge black and white lines all over the ship. And so what it basically does is creates an optical illusion for the enemy ship, so you can't even tell how far the ship is, you can't tell what direction it's even going, and you have no idea what kind of ship it is in the first place. And I didn't even know this until now, but uh, my cameraman just told me that when they're testing out new track cars with new different models, they will tend to use a dazzle pattern on them so that other companies can't even copy that exact design, which is super smart if you want to protect the design of the car itself. And there was a ton of different dazzle patterns that came out after that, with some using even bolder colors other than black and white, and in some sketches just like even more confusing. The Germans also dabbled a little bit in this design pattern, and they came up with something like this gray tone zebra stripes on the side of the ship's hull. The idea behind this pattern was to basically throw off the perspective of the ship if you're looking at it through binoculars. So imagine that you're trying to measure out the uh, distance of the ship and the entire time you've been measuring the wrong lines. Okay, so we already know that it's pretty damn difficult to hide a 50,000 ton, 800 foot metal block in the middle of the ocean. So how would shining a light on it be any more helpful? Okay, so before you can fully understand this concept, Mother Nature has come up with a little something called diffused lighting camouflage. And the best example of this would probably be the deep sea creature called the firefly squid. And I promise I'm not going on a tangent. It's actually really important that you see how Mother Nature utilizes diffused camouflage before we can actually apply that same concept to ships. So firefly squid are a species of cephalopods that spend their time around the coast of Japan. They usually spend their time at around 200 to 400 meters below water. That's equivalent to a 120 story building below water. That's, that's freaking deep. And since most of these animals live so deep underwater, the sunlight actually can't even penetrate that far. So most of them just live in pure darkness. And as a way to adapt, nature came up with one of the coolest concepts, bioluminescence. Scientists still to this day don't know exactly what bioluminescence is used for, whether it's to attract food, to attract mates, whether that's for camouflage, but has anybody actually just asked the damn squids? They get this cool ability from these little cells called photophores, and what they do is they emit light all over the body of the squid. And just take a look at these little guys. I may have thassalophobia, but I can admit these guys are pretty cute. And these photophores emit light so that they're actually able to camouflage with the moonlight above. So think about it as the moonlight shining down and let's say you're a predator looking upwards. If you're looking up and you see a black silhouette, then you're gonna know that there's a fish there. But if it's actually emitting this light that's matching the same color as the moonlight, it actually becomes a lot more difficult as a predator to see if there's anything there in the first place. Probably also because fish have horrible eyesight. So basically the whole mechanics of this is to diffuse your own silhouette using some light, but not too much light or else you're gonna do the exact opposite. All right, so in 1940, there was this Canadian professor named Edmund Godfrey Burr that was given a mission by Canada's National Research Council to study night observational instruments. So one night he was actually watching this plane land when all of a sudden the plane just disappeared into thin air. Although it didn't disappear, this is actually diffused lighting in action. See, when it was snowy, the light from the snow actually bounced off to the underside of the plane 
and that basically created this effect where the plane's lighting was equivalent to the clouds in the sky above it, making it virtually invisible without any camouflage. He saw this and he got a bit of an idea on how this could help ships hide away from German U-boats. You see, before radar was invented, German U-boats were able to spot other ships way before those ships were able to spot it because it was so below underwater and there was only a little bit popping out. So maybe this concept could actually level out the playing field between the two. Then he notified Canada's Naval Services and they gave him the thumbs up to do trials on a brand new Corvette HMCS Cobalt. He started by putting these simple, non-waterproof light projectors on these poles all around the ship, and they had this manual knob so that you could adjust the brightness of it to match the night sky. And after doing a couple of these, the trials went pretty well. So on their second version, they used these blue and these green filters all over the projectors so that they could equalize that super reddish tint that you know filament bulbs produce. And this proved to be super, super helpful in the long run. And on some trials, they were able to reduce the ship's visibility by 50%. And on some other conditions, even up to 75%. This is really good news when you spend thousands of dollars on a multi-million dollar ship. Imagine if none of this worked and they actually just spent thousands of dollars just putting lights on a ship. It's just the prettiest warship you've seen. Sums up the Navy pretty well. So on the third version, the third rendition, they placed these photo cells very, very similar to the squid's photophores to basically measure the brightness of the sky and the brightness of the ship so that the lights could be much better adjusted. And the results of these experiments seem to be pretty promising. And for further development, they reached out to the one and only Winston Churchill, who in his dapper language told them, surely all this business should be pressed forward on a broader front than on one ship. Why does everything you say sound like a deep quote? At any rate, that is what we are going to try to do. And just like that, the British Electric Company started creating these custom projectors specifically for the HMS Largs and the HMS Penelope between January and February of 1942. So they conducted several tests and on the 29th of January, they had an observer boat and the HMS ships, which were unlit in the middle of the night. And with the naked eye, you could generally observe the HMS ship at about 5,250 yards. But when the diffusers were turned on, you could only see it at about 2,250 yards. That's a 57% reduction in visibility. And although it worked pretty well, some party poopers in the Royal Navy decided that this was all unnecessary because German boats were getting equipped with RDF and underwater radar that wouldn't even need visibility to pick up ships anyway. So with more advanced technology in front of it, diffusion lighting camouflage slowly faded out of the Navy, although there were still some conversations going in and out about it, not as much. And if you couldn't tell by now, I actually just tricked you into learning about marine biology and warship camos. So there's nothing you can do about it other than sound smart in front of your friends. There was a ton of other camos and stealth tactics that I wanted to cover in this video, but didn't get enough time for. So if you wanted to see more content like that, then please, please comment what you would like to see next. And if you're a fan of military surplus or just really cool, weird and absurd things, then go to our site, get yourself some Navy drip, and I hope you liked the video and I'll see you in the next one.